day and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we will be taking a look at the Boeing 737 MAX. We will discuss this aircraft in detail and give an overview from the start of the 737 MAX program up to current news. In the comments section below, you will find timestamps to easily navigate to specific sections of this video. The Boeing 737 MAX is the fourth generation of the Boeing 737, a narrow-body airliner manufactured by Boeing Commercial Airplanes. It succeeds the Boeing 737 Next Generation. It is based on earlier 737 designs, with more efficient CFM International Leap 1B engines, aerodynamic changes including its distinctive split-tip winglets, and airframe modifications. Before problems emerged with the Boeing 737, the aircraft was looking like it was on the path to become a worthy replacement for the older model 737s and labeled by some airline CEOs as a game changer. So how did the order book look like prior to the MAX 8 grounding? American Airlines was the first disclosed customer. By November 17, 2011 there were 700 commitments from nine customers including Lion Air and SMBC Aviation Capital. By December 2011, the 737 MAX had 948 commitments and firm orders from 13 customers. On September 8, 2014, Ryanair agreed to 100 firm orders with 100 options. In January 2017, aircraft leasing company GCAS ordered 75. By January 2019 the 737 MAX had 5,011 firm orders from 78 identified customers, with the top three being Southwest Airlines with 280, Fly Dubai with 251, and Lion Air with 251. The first 737 MAX 8 was delivered to Melindo Air on May 16, 2017. With so many new features on the 737 MAX, the aircraft was described as a «game changer» by airline CEOs. Newer engines and longer range meant that the MAX would burn less fuel and would be a game changer for short to medium haul carriers. After a hugely successful start to the 737 MAX program the two accidents. Lion Air Flight 610, and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 crashed killing all occupants. As each accident is different we must look at this question on a case-by-case -case basis. Firstly let's take a look at, Lion Air, Flight 610. Preliminary investigations revealed serious flight control problems that traumatized passengers and crew on the aircraft's previous flight, as well as signs of angle of attack sensor and other instrument failures on that and previous flights, tied to a design flaw involving the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System of the 737 MAX series. The aircraft maintenance records indicated that the angle of attack sensor was just replaced before the accident flight. The report tentatively attributed the accident to the erroneous angle of attack data and automatic nose-down trim commanded by MCAS. The NTSC final report, published on October 23, 2019 was prepared with assistance from the US NTSB. NTSC's investigator Noor Kahyo Utomo identified nine factors to the accident, saying, the nine factors are the root problem, they cannot be separated. Not one is contributing more than the other. Unlike NTSB reports that identify the primary cause of accidents and then list contributing issues determined to be less significant, Indonesia is following a convention used by many foreign regulators of listing causal factors without ranking them. The final report has been shared with families of Lion Air Flight 610, then published on October 25, 2019. Finally let's have a look at Ethiopian Airlines, Flight 302. The initial reports for Flight 302 found that the pilot struggled to control the airplane in a manner similar to the Lion Air Flight 610 crash. On March 13, 2019, the FAA announced that evidence from the crash site and satellite data on Flight 302 suggested that it might have suffered from the same problem as Lion Air Flight 610 in that the jack screw controlling the pitch of the horizontal stabilizer of the crashed Flight 302, was found to be set in the full nose down position, similar to Lion Air Flight 610. This further implicated MCAS as contributory to the crash. Ethiopian Airlines spokesman Biniam Dumzi said that the procedures for disabling MCAS had just been incorporated into pilot training. All the pilots flying the MAX received the training after the Indonesia crash, he said. There was a directive by Boeing, so they took that training. Despite following the procedure, the pilots could not recover. The Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority is leading investigations for Flight 302. The United States Federal Aviation Administration will also assist in the investigation. Both the cockpit voice recorder and the flight data recorder were recovered from the crash site on March 11, 2019. The French Aviation Accident Investigation Agency BEA announced that it would analyze the flight recorders from the flight. 
BEA received the flight recorders on March 14, 2019. On March 17, 2019, the Ethiopia's transport minister announced that the black box had been found and downloaded, and that the preliminary data retrieved from the flight data recorder show a clear similarity with those of Lion Air Flight 610 which crashed off Indonesia. Due to this finding, some experts in Indonesia suggested that the NTSC should cooperate with Flight 302's investigation team. Later on the evening, the NTSC offered assistance to Flight 302's investigation team, stating that the committee and the Indonesian Transportation Ministry would send investigators and representatives from the government to assist with the investigation of the crash. The Ethiopian Civil Aviation Authority published an interim report on March 9, 2020, one day before the March 10 anniversary of the crash. Investigators have tentatively concluded that the crash was caused by the aircraft's design. Although each crash has its own specific reasons and failures leading up to a crash. The 737 MAXs that crashed in Indonesia and Ethiopia both had failed systems on board which started the chain of events leading up to their crash. A specific component of the jet the MCAS, was pinpointed as the culprit. We will discuss the MCAS system in detail later in this post. The main fault of the 737 MAX was identified as a software failure. This software played a direct role in the crashes of both Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines crashes. It is worth noting that the only reason this software is installed on the 737 MAX is due to design changes when compared to previous Boeing 7-37s. Bigger engines, meant that the 737 MAX had to mount its engines more forward than previous models. This change led to new flight characteristics when compared to previous models of the jet. To help keep the jet flying in a similar way to previous models, Boeing brought in a system called MCAS which we will discuss shortly. Investigations into the two crashes suggest that MCAS, or the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, erroneously engaged, forcing the plane's noses to point down, and that pilots were unable to regain control of the aircraft. So why does the 737 MAX have this system? MCAS was designed to compensate for the 737 MAX having larger engines than previous 737 generations. The larger engines could cause the plane's nose to tip upward, leading to a stall. In that situation, the system could automatically point the nose down to negate the effect of the engine size. On the Boeing 737 MAX, MCAS was intended to mimic pitching behavior similar to aircraft in the previous generation of the series, the Boeing 737 ing MCAS activated by input from only one of the airplane's two angle of attack sensors, making the system susceptible to a single point of failure. It could not be instinctively disabled by pulling on the control yoke. During aircraft certification, Boeing removed a description of MCAS in the MAX flight manuals, leaving pilots unaware of the system when the airplane entered service. B. On November 10, 2018, Boeing publicly revealed MCAS in a discussion with airline operators and other aviation interests 12 days after Lion Air Flight 610 crashed. Yet, a recovery procedure highlighted by Boeing and the FAA failed to prevent the crash of Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, which led to the global grounding of all 737 MAX aircraft pending investigations and software fixes. C. In April 2019, Boeing admitted that MCAS played a role in both accidents. The investigations identified numerous defects with associated systems, including an AOA disagree message that should have prevented MCAS activation. The Wall Street Journal reported that Boeing failed to share information about that issue for about a year before the Lion Air crash in Indonesia. On March 11, 2019, the Civil Aviation Administration of China ordered the country's airlines to suspend all commercial operations of their Boeing 737 MAX 8 jets. On March 12, 2019 the European Union Aviation Safety Agency announced a suspension of two Boeing 737 MAX models in all flights in the European bloc. On March 13 the Federal Aviation Administration ordered the temporary grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft operated by U.S. airlines or in the U.S. territory. This follows similar moves by airline regulators across the globe in the wake of the deadly plane crash in Ethiopia that killed all 157 people on board. Canadian Transport Minister Mark Garneau also announced on the same day that all of its Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft were grounded and the jet was banned from entering Canadian airspace. The 737 MAX has been grounded since March 2019 after a pair of fatal crashes. Boeing cleared a key hurdle in getting the plane airborne again late last month when it completed three days of test flights with the FAA, but the process is still ongoing. Boeing has made significant progress over the past several months in support of safely returning the 737 MAX to service.
As the company continues to work with the FAA and other global regulators on the process laid out for certifying the 737 MAX software and related training updates. The company has also made significant governance and operational changes to further sharpen its focus. These two tragic accidents continue to weigh heavily on everyone at Boeing. We have established a $100 million relief fund to meet family and community needs of those affected by these accidents. Simply put, yes the 737 MAX will fly again. Although it has had to go through stringent testing. The 737 MAX will first have to be recertified to fly. In August 2020, the FAA announced its final list of design, operation, maintenance and training changes that must be completed before the MAX's return to service, expected no earlier than mid-October. Realistically we will probably see the 737 MAX flying in the United States a lot sooner than other areas of the world. There is currently no solid time frame for the 737 MAX to be recertified in Europe under the control of EASA. This means that it will easily be well into 2021 before we might see this jet resume operations globally. On July 1 the Federal Aviation Administration and Boeing have completed certification test flights on the 737 MAX, a key milestone toward the plane's return to service. The FAA said it must still evaluate data from the three days of testing and has other tasks to complete. The agency is following a deliberate process and will take the time it needs to thoroughly review Boeing's work, the FAA said. We will lift the grounding order only after FAA safety experts are satisfied that the aircraft meets certification standards. In August 2020, Transport Canada and EASA scheduled similar but independent activities. Before the MAX resumes service, each aircraft must be repaired as per a forthcoming airworthiness directive from the FAA. Most within the industry believe there will be a bright future for the aircraft. Now that the MAX has been passed under a microscope, the aircraft, when it is released to service again, will have passed through so much testing that it will be as safe as any aircraft can be. On Thursday EASA began recertification flights. In a statement, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency said it's working closely with Boeing during the process. EASA judges the overall maturity of the redesign process is now sufficient to proceed to flight tests. These are a prerequisite for the European Agency to approve the aircraft's new design. The EASA tests come two months after the FAA completed its own certification flights out of Seattle. The agency has since released a list of changes it says Boeing must make to the MAX before it can return to service. Both the EASA and Transport Canada have said their certification of the aircraft will be independent of any FAA approval. What do you think is next for the Boeing 737 MAX? Will the aircraft be a success story? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.